three, two, one. I'm going to give it a beat. So, good morning. This is Dr. Grace Telesco. I'm here with Mr. Ed Denzel, who's the host of Unfound. And we are doing a little bit of a preview here for something that's going to happen on May 7th at 6 p.m. Um, let me introduce Mr. Denzel to you. He's the host of Unfound, which is a podcast and a YouTube series that focuses on tragic missing person cases. This Facebook Live broadcast will focus on a missing person case of Dory Ann Myers, who was last seen on January 10th, 2006, at a bar in Vero Beach, where witnesses say she left with two men. Later that night, a fire gutted, gutted her house. Her car was also burned and found about 80 miles away in Glades County. Mr. Denzel is an ethical investigative journalist. He's a screenwriter, he's an actor, and he's dedicated his career to investigating these missing person cases. I'm Dr. Grace Telesco from Fishland College of Education School of Criminal Justice. I am so thrilled that we're gonna be doing this uh, Facebook live uh, presentation, live stream. Uh, again, next, uh, two weeks from now, Thursday, May 7th at 6 p.m. And uh, so Ed, do you wanna tell us a little bit, just got a, a teaser about the case and a little bit about your work? Sure. Uh, first about my work. I've been doing Unfound for about three and a half years. This, uh, the first episode came out on September sixth or September second, twenty sixteen. That was the disappearance of Suzanne Lyle. Uh, pretty much, uh, we have not missed uh, a Friday. That's when the episodes come out uh, every Friday at two p.m. Eastern. Um, pretty much every Friday since then, an episode has come out uh, along the way. I've picked up uh, quite a bit of help. I have uh, quite a few assistants that help me with the program. Uh, Emily, Cherie, Heather, Carrie, Eric, Natasha, they all have their responsibilities um, working on the program behind the scenes. Um, we've covered about uh, 100, uh, 169 disappearances from the United States and Canada, and even one of an American who disappeared uh, in Africa. And, uh, but as far as Dorianne Myers' disappearance, I've known about her disappearance for quite a while. It actually took a while um, before I could get her sister Donna Jean to be on the program. I think we first started talking about her being on the program as, an, as the guest in late 2016, so not long after the program started. And then finally, uh, uh, you know, two and a half years later, I got her to come on the program during the summer of 2019. And the case is important to me, you know, as how I picked that one out out of so many uh, choices is because Donna Jean passed away. Uh, Dorian's uh, sister passed away at the end of October 2019 from a disease I believe she had had for quite a while. And so now, you know, there's not, a, you know, there's not somebody out there who can be letting everybody know about this. Uh, disappearance because Donna Jean had been doing it for 13 years and now we kind of had have to pick it up for her being that she's not with us. I think to the people going to Nova Southeastern University the reason it should be important is it is a Florida disappearance. Uh, it occurred in Vero Beach which is just she had for quite a while and so uh, now well, you know there's not a, you know there's no, not somebody out. Hold on a second somebody's okay um and it occurred just uh, north of where Nova Southeastern University is. And also it, it has a lot of uh, elements to it that I think that this disappearance can still be solved all these years later between the fires that you've already mentioned and the sketches of the men who are allegedly with her last night. So those are the reasons that I picked that one out. I usually don't like to pick one case over another, but for the, the circumstances of us doing this, uh, program this interview that's the one I picked out great great thank you so much thank you so much and I see that we have a couple of people who are already watching our our session here our preview so I'm really excited about uh about doing this one hour live stream with you Ed and I appreciate your work um we have a lot in common we'll talk about that during the show uh one of the things that I and we've talked about this before you and I privately 
is that one of the things that I resonate with is your work with the families. Um, so when I was a first responder at Ground Zero, I worked for the NYPD for 20 years and retired at the rank of lieutenant. My last assignment was 9-11 post-recovery work. And, it were, and I worked directly with families, so many families of missing persons. As you know, only about half of those who, um, who were victims of the World Trade Center uh, attack were found. Uh, their bodies intact. Yes. So the half of half of them were not found, and that that crisis and that trauma for um, for families. The you know we talk you hear a lot about closure, and and well there is no closure uh, for these families. So you and mm -hmm. I have that in common. I think that during the show we'll talk a little bit about that if sure. you don't mind. Um, Great. Because, and I also want to talk about some of the wear and tear it takes on you. Um, you know, it's, it's, there was wear and tear on me as a first responder and working with families. So many, so many victims, so many cases. And um, it really it wears on you uh, in, in, a, in a way that is you got to really take care of yourself, make sure you're, you're utilizing self-care. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, maybe you'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Sure. We, talk, we can do that. Absolutely. Okay, that's great. So, um, is there anything else that you want to say to just uh, to the audience that might be watching in terms of a preview about what's to come uh, for the hour uh, that's going to happen May seventh at six o'clock? Well, I, I'm excited to talk to you, uh, Doctor Telesco. Um, of course, uh, we were supposed to be do this uh, one on one in person, but due to the coronavirus, uh, with the benefits of technology, we can still do this. Uh, over the internet, uh, not something I, I'm sure had we scheduled to do this 15 years ago, I don't think we could have done this. So we're fortunate to be living in the year 2020 when these things uh, can still be done. And I'm certainly looking forward to it. I guess for me, you know, I do so many interviews. I interview people. Um, you know, I've done almost 200 interviews now over the last three and a half years. I have to admit, it's going to be interesting for me to be uh, on the other side of an interview for once. I'm looking forward to that. That's great. That's great. And, you know, a lot of our uh, students, current students and potential candidates um, might be interested in our show because of their interest in forensics and their interest in criminal justice and criminology. Because I think that one of the things that you and I had talked about is throughout the program, uh, I might be able to throw in a little bit of the criminological explanation, the criminal mind, the profile of this criminal, perhaps, and maybe some of the explanations. Uh, so for, for those of you who are interested in, in tuning in, those of you who have that appetite for missing person cases and the forensics and criminal minds, the, definitely this is the, uh, the show you want to tune into. I look forward to it. And uh, I know that, that Ed is going to look forward to it as well. Mm -hmm. So, if, you, if you're looking for information about NSU's Fischler College of Education and School of Criminal Justice, um, Dr. Jacobs kind is also uh, kind of in the background right now as a technical uh, technical director. He's going to place that in the chat box in Facebook um, right now, and he's going to be responding as, as himself to you and let you know that you can go to that link for more information. So join us. Thank you, Ed, for uh, taking the time out for this preview. And thank you, Dr. Jacobs Kind for and recruitment from Fischler College of Education for being on for this preview. And we look forward to seeing you then, May 7, 6 o'clock. Stay safe, everybody. <laughs>